Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Theory video. This one will certainly be a lot more mathematical than any other video I've ever made, but this is one that has been on my mind for the longest time, and I am really glad to share it with you guys. It's a running theme that a Yu-Gi-Oh! main character is always able to draw whatever card they seemingly need. You rarely see the heart of the cards let them down, and throughout the decades we have seen some of the most incredible top decking ever. And so, being the nerd that I am, I I thought to myself, hmm, what are the actual odds of drawing certain cards in life or death, win or lose situations, since these characters always seem to get it done? And thus, after crunching some numbers that I will share with you shortly, I am proposing that Yugi Moto's draws are luckier than winning the lottery. That's right, Yugi has more luck throughout his journey than any Powerball jackpot winner, or Mega Millions jackpot winner, or the Super and a Lotto jackpot winner. It doesn't matter. The actual odds of Yugi drawing the cards he needs throughout Duel Monsters has them all beat, and it's not even close. But without further ado, I present to you the theory that Yugi's draws are luckier than winning a lottery jackpot. Let's begin, and I hope you all enjoy the video. Now, Yugi gets a lot of amazing draws throughout Duel Monsters, but I was careful in only picking situations that he needed a certain card or a certain set of cards, otherwise he would lose the duel. Therefore, I have picked three different duels that we can analyze, which will pretty much confirm this theory. Duel 1 is the first duel between Yugi and Bakura. Duel 2 is the very first duel of the show, the one between Yugi and Kaiba, the Exodia duel. And Duel 3 is the duel when Yugi takes over for Kaiba against Noah during Season 3. We only need to look at these three duels to demonstrate just how incredibly lucky Yugi, and Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonists for that matter, are. So let's take a look at Duel 1, which will be the easiest to analyze. Yugi has one turn left before Bakura's Destiny Board spell card completes the word Death, or final if you are watching the English dub. Yugi needs to draw Slifer. He even states it's the only card in his deck that can win him the duel. And so, assuming Yugi has a 40 card deck, which we will always be assuming he has a 40 card deck since that's the minimum number of cards you need in your deck to play, along with the fact that we can confirm he used the 40 card deck in his final duel against Bakura, brace yourself for some math, Yugi's deck starts with 40 cards, he draws 12 throughout the duel, including the 5 he starts with, meaning he has 28 cards remaining in his deck when this turn occurs. So, Yugi has a 1 in 28 chance of drawing Slifer, or a measly 3.6%. To no one's shock, Yugi beats the odds in this scenario and draws Slifer, which does in fact lead him to defeat Bakura. And I know a lot of you are saying, well Dylan, this is nowhere near the odds of winning the Powerball jackpot or the Mega Millions jackpot, which just for reference is a staggering 1 in 258,890,850. Now yes, this scenario is nowhere near those odds, but we'll get there, don't worry. Let's now take a look at Duel 2, the infamous Exodia Obliterate Duel. The only way Yugi can defeat Kaiba in this duel is by summoning Exodia. Much like the previous example, there is no room for error. If Yugi fails to summon Exodia, he fails to defeat Kaiba. Just like if he failed to summon Slifer, he would have failed to defeat Bakura. So, once again, assuming Yugi is using a 40 card deck, he has 28 cards remaining at this point, and three of the five pieces of Exodia are in his hand. The only way to summon Exodia is to have all five pieces in your hand. Thanks to Swords of Revealing Light, Yugi has three draws left, and needs to draw the remaining two pieces of Exodia in these three draws. So how do we calculate those odds? Well, it's definitely not nearly as simple as the Duel 1 situation. We have to use a formula called a hypergeometric distribution. Don't worry, it's completely over my head too. I'm very fortunate I have a brother who is an actuary and is incredible with numbers, so huge shout out to my brother Dean for helping me with these next two scenarios. If you want to double check his math, be my guest. But anyway, the odds of Yugi successfully drawing the last two Exodia pieces, given three chances from a 28 card deck, is 0.794%. That's it. That's a roughly 1 in 128 chance of successfully pulling this miracle off against Kaiba. Meaning, if you ran this scenario 128 times, you would only pull off drawing the final pieces of Exodia once. So, Duel 1 had odds of 1 in 28, Duel 2 had odds of 1 in 128, now let's move on to Duel 3, which has to contain one of the most disgusting, ridiculous, mythical combos you will ever witness someone pulling off 
in a Yu-Gi-Oh duel. If you thought the math that was done to get to the odds for drawing Exodia was bad, then this math is going to be really a lot to take in. Kaiba vs. Noah, who knew when this duel began that it would involve one of the most incredibly lucky draws in Yu-Gi-Oh history? Once again, assuming Kaiba starts with a 40 card deck, by the time he is turned into stone, his deck only has 12 cards left. After Kaiba is turned to stone by Noah, Yugi decided to take over for him and combines his own deck with Kaiba's. So, it's safe to assume that Yugi uses his 40 card deck and adds Kaiba's 12 cards to that deck, giving the new deck a total of 52 cards. By the time this combo happens, Yugi has 100 life points left, while Noah has a grand total of 10,000. Yugi needs a miracle to win this duel. I mean, the word miracle might even be short-selling what has to happen and what does in fact happen. With 43 cards remaining in his deck, he draws Card of Sanctity. This lets him draw the most insane six-card combo you will ever see. He draws two Blue Eyes White Dragons, Monster Reborn, Fusion, Quick Attack, and defusion. This allows him to revive one of the blue eyes in the grave, then fuse the blue eyes on the field with the two in his hand to summon blue eyes ultimate dragon. He uses quick attack so that blue eyes ultimate dragon is allowed to attack. This destroys the monster that Noah has on his field, and then finally, Yugi uses defusion, which allows the three blue eyes to deal Noah 9,000 points of damage, winning Yugi the duel. I excuse me, what? Did Yugi seriously pull off a combo like that? I get chills thinking about how insane of a combo that is to pull off when you literally have zero cards left in your hand. But now, here comes the fun part. Let's get to breaking down the odds of actually drawing these cards so that this combo is possible to hit. For this example, there are two scenarios. Scenario A, which is drawing Card of Sanctity, and Scenario B, which is drawing the six cards needed for this combo with 42 cards remaining in the deck. Scenario A is very easy to figure out. It's simply 1 in 43 chances of drawing Card of Sanctity. The next part is fun. Once again, using that same hypergeometric distribution formula we used in the Exodia duel, we can calculate the odds of Yugi drawing all these cards. Now this is important. We are only assuming that two copies of the Blue Eyes White Dragon remains in the deck, only one copy of Monster Reborn remains, and only one copy of Defusion, Fusion, and Quick Attack remains as well. I will do an example a little later where we're a little more liberal with how many copies of these cards may exist in the deck. But after doing the probability related math, we know that the odds of drawing these six cards are 1 in 5,245,786. But we aren't done. In this example, scenario B is completely dependent on scenario A. If Yugi doesn't draw Card of Sanctity, this combo is destroyed. It can't be hit. Therefore, the odds of hitting both scenario A and scenario B are what we really need to calculate, which is fairly simple to calculate, actually. By multiplying 5,245,786 and 43, we can get those odds. So the odds of Yugi hitting this entire combo against Noah, which won him the duel, is, get ready for this, 1 in 225 million 568,798. That alone is almost near the astronomical odds of hitting a mega lottery jackpot. Again, that means if you ran this scenario over 225 million times, you would only hit this combo once. And yet, Yugi, defying all the odds, as he always does, executes the impossible and hits this insanely incredible combo to defeat Noah. We're in the end game of this theory now. I know none of the scenarios we have calculated thus far have actually taken us over the odds of winning the lottery, but it's about to. Let's take a step back and look at these duels again. I think it's objective to say that in all of these situations, Yugi did get the monster he needed, or the insane combo he needed to avoid defeat. What I want to calculate now is the combined odds of Yugi actually hitting all of these three combos. Sure, on their own, the first two aren't too ridiculous, but let's combine them. Again, taking a step back, Yugi was successful in all three of these scenarios, so basically the question now is, what are the odds that Yugi actually hits all three of these long shot draws or scenarios. Yugi is successful in all three of them, so analyzing them from that perspective isn't unfair or overkill or anything like that. So, by multiplying these three numbers, that's how we get new odds. The new odds that Yugi will actually be successful in these situations, and the results are incredible. The odds that Yugi actually will hit 
all three of these scenarios, drawing Slifer, getting the final two pieces of Exodia, and hitting that six card combo with Card of Sanctity, which he does in the anime, are one in 808 billion, 438 million, 539,776. One in over 800 billion. No lottery jackpot winner even approaches this kind of luck. The odds of winning the Powerball are nearly 1 in 300 million. The odds of winning the Super and a Lotto are just over 1 in 600 million. Neither of these even break 1 in 1 billion. Yugi really should have spent more time playing the lottery than playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And keep in mind, these are just three scenarios. Three. I'm not even including the odds of Gandora being on the bottom of Yugi's deck during his final duel against Bakora, which was the card that literally saved him in that duel. You add that card in, and Yugi's necessary card draw odds now in four situations are well above one in one trillion. Now, I won't lie, this number might be a bit inflated. Let's go back to that Noah duel which I said I was going to earlier in the video. What if Yugi had two copies of Monster Reborn in his deck, two copies of Defusion, and maybe two copies of Fusion or Polymerization? I actually recalculated it using those new possible statistics, and the odds then for the entire situation, including having to draw Card of Sanctity first, become 1 in 28,196,089. Not nearly as bad as the 1 in 225 million, but still a hell of a long shot. Using that number instead of the 1 in 225 million number, we then get the odds of Yugi hitting all three of these combos as a not nearly as bad 1 in 101 billion, 54 million, 782,976. Unfortunately, we will never know the cards that remained in Yugi and Kaiba's deck when he pulled off that combo, but even being very liberal and assuming there are multiple copies of most of the cards Yugi needed to hit it, the odds of hitting it are still ridiculous. So, I think it's safe to say that the real-life chances of being able to draw like Yugi or top deck like Yusei is not too realistic. Just being able to hit these three scenarios, which Yugi does, usher in odds of at least over 1 in 100 billion, skyrocketing any kind of lottery jackpot. Hopefully the math really backed this theory up, but at the end of the day, it is just a theory. A Yu-Gi-Oh theory! Thanks for watching. Wait a second, is it still considered a theory when math and stats pretty much prove it to be right? At that point, it's no longer a theory anymore, right? Ah, uh, whatever. I'll leave that up for you guys to decide down below. But guys and gals, that pretty much does wrap it up. I really hope the math wasn't too crazy and that your head isn't spinning right now like mine is. And of course, I really hope you enjoyed. So what do you guys think about this? Do you think Yugi's draws are by far way more luckier when looking at the big picture than winning any sort of lottery jackpot? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. Again, huge thank you to my brother Dean for helping me do these calculations. And by helping me, I mean doing them all by himself and a huge thank you to all of you watching at home also a big thank you to my platinum tier patrons alexa baker christopher johannes boska glenn mccookin jorge carrillo derek benson and james rose and a big thank you to my diamond tier patrons solid snack and Bouldergeist. i cannot thank you and anyone who supports me over on patreon enough your support really means the world to me and i cannot thank all of you watching from home enough either be sure to check out my channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! anime content thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.